Morita Therapy, Wikipedia Article Audio Morita Therapy is an ecological, purpose-centered, response-oriented therapy created through case-based research by Shoma Morita, MD. Morita developed his theory of consciousness and medically grounded four-stage progressive therapeutic method with rigor. A Brief Introduction Background Underlying Philosophy Morita's Four Stages Methods The Four Areas of Treatment while Morita therapy has been described as cognate to Albert Ellis's rational emotive therapy, this description does not account for the ecological foundation of the therapy. Morita therapy also has commonalities with existential and cognitive behavioral therapy. Morita therapy offers a philosophical orientation and experiential method that moves clients to follow nature and act according to the laws of emotion that Morita described, in this way one can live according to her or his own essential nature. Morita describes his own therapy as follows. Although I tried various therapies, including hypnosis for clients with anxiety disorders, I did not obtain results beyond the temporary relief of symptoms in clients. I also used the life control method for many years and followed Bin Swanger's theory, only to find it manristic, too theoretical, relatively impractical, and ineffective. Bin Swanger's methods deprived my clients of spontaneous activity. Initially, I tried to modify and extend these existing systems, but later designed my own method of treatment. In principle, my method of therapy requires residential care, my treatment involves four stages, isolation rest therapy, light occupational therapy, heavy occupational therapy, and complicated activity therapy in preparation for actual life. Shoma Morita, M.D. was a psychiatrist, researcher, philosopher, and academic department chair at Jikiai University School of Medicine in Tokyo. Morita's personal training in Zen influenced his teachings, yet Morita therapy is not a Zen practice. However, his treatment contains paradoxical methods that reflect Zen. Morita formulated his psychotherapeutic principles in Japan as a program for the treatment of neurotic tendencies at the same time that attention in Europe was given to Sigmund Freud's discovery of the unconscious and Carl Jung's development of archetypes. As clients move through the four stages, their senses are activated and curiosity about the natural world increases. Herein, they engage and respond more spontaneously and creatively, while gaining a sense of their authentic self. For Morita, it was the progressive design and ecological context that made it unique to other therapies of his time, as well as today. Therapeutic change runs deeper than thinking and behaving. One's perception of self in the world shifts while moving through the therapeutic stages. A client's mind, body, and imagination have therapeutic time in a safe place in a natural environment to become revitalized, this is particularly necessary when they have survived trauma. For instance, while pulling weeds and watching earthworms seek moist soil, they notice that their anxiety has dissipated and they soon embody such experiences. It is the therapist's role to observe, facilitate, and reinforce these experiences. Morita therapy directs one's attention receptively to what reality brings in each moment of focus on the present, avoiding intellectualizing. Simple seeing what is, allows for active responding to what needs doing. Most therapies strive to reduce symptoms. Morita therapy, however, aims at building character to enable one to take action responsively in life regardless of symptoms, natural fears, and wishes. 
Character is determined by behavior, by what one does. Dogmatic patterns of collapse are replaced with the flexibility to call upon courage and empowerment. Decisions become grounded in purpose rather than influenced by the fluid flow of feelings. In Morita therapy, character is developed by cultivating awareness, decentralizing the self, and honoring the rhythms of the natural environment and one's own diurnal rhythms. Aspects of mindfulness are contained in knowing what is controllable and what is not controllable, and seeing what is so without attachment to expectations. Knowing what one is doing, knowing what the situation is requiring, and knowing the relationship between the two are quintessential to self-validation, effective living, and personal fulfillment. Character is developed as one moves from being feeling-centered to being purpose-centered. A feeling-centered person attends to feelings to such an extent that the concern for self-protection reigns over decisions and perceptions. Given the human condition, change, pain, and pleasure are natural experiences. Indeed, emotions are a rich type of experience and a valuable source of information. Feelings are acknowledged even when what is to be done requires not acting on them. Constructive action is no longer put on hold in order to process or cope with symptoms or feelings. The individual can focus on the full scope of the present moment as the guide for determining what needs to be done. Ultimately, the successful student of Morita therapy learns to accept the internal fluctuations of thoughts and feelings and ground his or her behavior in reality and the purpose of the moment. Cure is not defined by the alleviation of discomfort or the attainment of some ideal feeling state, but by taking constructive action in one's life which helps one to live a full and meaningful existence and not be ruled by one's emotional state. Morita therapy was developed to deal with what Morita defined as Shinkaishitsu anxiety-based disorders involving a high degree of perfectionism. Morita offered a four-stage process of therapy involving Morita therapy may be seen as a form of re-socialization, involving a social influence process. Shoma Morita's groundbreaking work was first published in Japan in 1928, so that pure Morita therapy had its greatest applications to a Japanese culture almost 100 years ago. Morita therapy methods brought Morita's original thinking to the West, and has sought to adapt it to modern Western minds and culture. Thus, for example, the original Morita treatment process has the patient spend their first week of treatment isolated in a room without any outside stimulation no books, no television, no therapy other than being alone with their own thoughts. Modern day benefits providers are unlikely to see the ancient wisdom of paying for people who are attempting to learn to better face the challenges of life to spend a week alone sitting in a hospital bed and the practice has been modified, the MTM approach seeking nonetheless to remain consistent with the underlying principles. The Shinkaishitsu concept has also been broadened to consider not just anxiety, but life situations in which modern Westerners may find themselves, involving stress, pain and the aftermath of trauma. While no cure-all, and requiring personal commitment and action, MTM is an amalgamation of Eastern treatment methods applied to the Western mind, and claims to help patients find, and use, a well of inner strength deep within themselves that enables them to make powerful changes in their life, though further research to clarify its effectiveness in Western settings is still required. As with Morita therapy proper, MTM is roughly divided into four basic areas of treatment. The seclusion and rest stage lasts from four to seven days. It is a period of learning to separate oneself from the minute-by-minute -minute barrage of the constant assault on one's senses and thought processes by a loud and intrusive world. 
the patient learns to turn off the television, close the door temporarily to demanding work, well-meaning friends, and even family. The goal is for the body to return to natural diurnal rhythms. During the second stage, patients are introduced to a light and monotonous work that is conducted in silence. The second stage takes three to seven days. One of the keystones of this stage of self-treatment is journal writing. Because Morita believed people's thoughts and feelings come to them in indistinguishable waves and flood their minds, he thought that writing in a personal journal would help patients learn to separate their thoughts from their feelings and define the different effects on their lives. In this phase, patients are also required to go outside, that is, both outside of themselves and out of the house, the goal being to begin a reconnection with nature. In the third stage, Morita had his patients engage in hard physical work outdoors. Like the second stage, this stage lasts from three to seven days. This is what he called the chopping wood phase. For people with physical injuries, it is the phase where they move from passive treatment given to them by others to learning to begin healing themselves through a stretch and strength oriented physical therapy program. Morita therapy incorporates moving from being treated to learning self treatment in both the physical and psychological realms. Depending upon the depth and nature of injury, this third stage can become a part of daily life for some patients. Some pain resolves, some pain needs to be managed. The beneficial aspect of this phase of treatment is that it also encourages the engagement of what we now understand is the right side of the brain. The recovering survivor is encouraged to spend time in creating art writing, painting, wood carving, or whatever puts them into contact with the creative aspects of their humanity. The fourth stage is when Morita would send patients outside the hospital setting. It can last from one to two weeks. The patients would apply what they had learned in the first three stages and use it to help them with the challenge of reintegration into the non-treatment world. This is the phase in which the patient learns to integrate a new lifestyle of meditation, physical activity, clearer thinking, more ordered living, and a renewed relationship with the natural world. They are not returning to their former lifestyle. Instead, they will integrate their new self into the imposed set of changes brought about by their trauma, pain, and limitations. As reintegration into the world outside of treatment brings with it some unanticipated challenges, the survivor returns to the materials they studied and perhaps even the counsel of their teacher to find coping skills that will allow them to progress further and further on the journey of recovery. Seclusion and rest that is monitored for client safety, occupational therapy, occupational therapy, complex activities.